Welcome back to our second review of the deck building roguelike card game tutorial series. This is our 14th episode in total, but um, today we'll be reviewing episodes uh, numbered 7 through 12. And uh, there's a few things I want to touch on that we went through over these series, uh, but currently this is the play state for our game. We can hit play, we draw six cards to begin with, we can draw additional cards, we can play these characters, we can mouse over them and we can see their stats. Okay, and we can play these cards, these spell cards on these characters to modify their abilities. Additionally, when we are playing these cards, they're going into our discard pile. And uh, whenever we draw cards, they're being drawn from our draw pile. And whenever we run out of cards in our uh, draw pile, we will end up drawing cards from our discard pile back into our draw pile. That's where we're at currently. So the very first thing I want to go over today is our singletons. We went over this in episode 7. And so we have um, our game manager set up as a singleton. This ensures that there's only ever one version of the game manager in the game at any given time. To do this, we have a static variable called instance inside of our game manager script and then inside of our game manager script we go down inside of our awake method and we check if instance is set to anything if that static variable is set to anything if it is not then instance now equals this and we do not destroy this uh object when we transfer between scenes um, and then we will run our initialize manager script. If instance does not equal this, then it destroys itself. So if instance has already been set, then it destroys itself to make sure we don't have duplicates. And that's how this script works. That's how singleton class works to make sure you only have a single instance of that script in your game at any given time. Next, we started working on our grid management in our episode eight. And we start with our grid manager script here. Here we are creating a grid and we are creating it with a width and a height, which we are setting up here. So it's an eight by four grid. So it's eight wide, four, four tall. And we're just kind of offsetting them to make sure that our grid is centered. And inside of each position, we are creating a grid cell that holds objects inside of it for us to display and for us to interact with. Next, we started making a whole bunch of changes to our card movement script. So most of these changes happen inside of our handle play state. We modified our handle play state over the course of multiple episodes um, so that we can actually start playing our cards. So at a certain point in episode 11, we in integrated some spell cards along with our character cards. So that's why now inside of our handle play state, we are doing try to play character card and try to play spell card depending upon if it is a spell or character and we will review that in just a moment and so when we are playing our character or spells they are if it's a character it's being added to the grid it's being removed from our hand it's being added to our discard manager and then it's uh updating the visuals of our hand manager giving us a log and it's destroying the card that's a part of so what this does is make sure that our draw pile is getting the cards that we are playing, or our discard pile, excuse me, our discard pile is getting the cards that we are playing so we can draw them again in the future. And it's also destroying it from the hand and it's placing the character on the grid if there is a character. Similarly for our spell cards, we are applying the effect of the spell. Okay, and then we are removing the spell from our hand and then we are adding it to the discard pile and we are destroying the game object. And so this is basically what we're doing now for our uh, how to play our cards and get them on the grid and modify our stats with the cards. And this is also how we are doing our handle play state now. And yeah, that's about it for that section. Now let's go ahead and move on to our classes and subclasses that we made for our cards. So the biggest change that we made and this 
these past few episodes that was that we added a subclass to cards called spells and character. So basically we took all the attributes that were in our spell card that were dedicated to just characters and put them off into their own uh, class here. And then we made this class inherit from our card class. So we have a few variables that apply to both cards and spells. And so this character is inheriting from that card class to allow us to take in those variables as well as kind of uh, separate this apart from our spell cards that we have. And then of course, we also made our spell class that allows us to um, create spell cards and uh, play them effectively. And then finally, we have our character stats script, which is holding the stats for the characters after they are played. Um, and so what this does is it allows us to modify those stats as they are, they are attached to the character as we need to throughout the game phase. This means that we can now damage the characters if we need to, as well as modify their attributes while they are uh, after they have already been played. This allows us to modify these stats without actually affecting the stats of the card itself. And then we also set up a tooltip to display those stats so we can see them inside the game itself. Now let's hop back into the game and review all of that one by one. So to start, we have our game manager, which is holding a bool for our playing card, as well as when we hit play, it's gonna make sure that we have these other managers inside of our game. And if we don't have them, it will spawn them. So we go ahead and hit play, and deck manager is gonna draw some cards for us. Okay, and we see them inside of our hand. Now, if we open up our grid manager, you can see we don't have anything inside of our grid. If we go to our hand position, you can see we've got these card prefabs inside of here. Okay, so now I can, with the card movement script, I can drag it over my grid, and we've got this highlight effect now going, where if we can play the card, then it's going to highlight green. If we can't, it's going to highlight red. So we play the card, and see we now we have um, our character out here, and we can do that for all of these various characters. Okay, we can draw all cards, and you see our discard pile is going up. This is all from our card movement script. Okay, and now as the character is out there, because of our tooltip methods that we have, I can hover over this, and we have a tooltip prefab that's going to display our stats for this character as they sit currently. Okay, and I can look at all of our different characters that we have and view their stats. Okay, and so this spell changes the type to light. I know this draw uh, buttons kind of get in the way. We do need to move it in the future. I meant to do it in the last video, but I forgot. You know we'll just do that in this video in just a moment. So you can see I can hover over one of these characters and so this one's it's, its damage type is dark. I can play this on here, and now its damage type is light. Okay, and that's all that we've done so far. I know it seems like it's uh, really quick and easy to go through, but man, we did a lot of work. There's a lot of hours put into this game so far. Um, I hope that you'll continue with me as we go through to the end. We're going to have 12 more episodes. The next six will be going over the battle phase primarily, fixing up the UI a little bit, getting in an AI that we'll be going up against that can play their own spells and their own cards. We'll set up some round uh, that we can go through and we'll also set up some resources that we have to expend to play our cards. And uh, we'll do, uh, we'll basically just kind of solidify our game loop inside of the battle scene. Um, and then the next six, six episodes after that will be all about progression. After we defeat the um, AI, what happens next? You know, how do we even get to the AI? What is our, you know, how do we, how is this actually a roguelike? Because it's not really got any roguelike elements. It's just a battle game so far. So that that's where the roguelike elements is going to come through is in the last six episodes, really. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix this draw pile thing we got going in here. So, draw pile counter. Um, no, we want our draw card button. That's what we want. 
So you're just gonna come over here. Actually, you know what? Let me hit Control C on that. You're just gonna go way up to the top, I think. 500 is too high. Let's do 450. That looks good. All right, so it's all out of the way. I mean, this card's gonna be get deleted at some point. This one's gonna get deleted at some point because we won't have the option to draw cards. It's just gonna be all through the rounds and it's gonna be automated through the game. Okay, that's it for this review. Hopefully I didn't go too fast for you guys. Um, just to be clear, because I don't think I was clear enough in the last episode or, or I guess I wasn't firm enough in the last episode. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to download the copy of the project they can find from the description in this video. And I want you to be using that from now on when you're following through the uh, tutorial series. This is because as we're moving on further and further, the things we're doing is very specific to the game that we are building together. Sure, you can take a lot of the lessons you learn here and apply it to your own games. Absolutely, you can do that. But for me to be able to troubleshoot issues with you and for you to be able to keep up with what we're doing, I really want you to work off of my copy of the game so I can know that you're, we're all starting from the same point. This means that, you know, when we get up to episode 18 or whatever, I don't have to go, oh, well, what have you done differently? And then you have to go through all 18 episodes of what you've done differently. I can just know you've started with a copy from episode 12, and I can just look at the variables that we've changed since episode 12. That'll help me troubleshoot issues better with you and allow you to follow along easier with the episodes as we move on. So that's all that we have now. Um, I'll see you soon in the next episode for episode 13, um, where we will begin setting up our AI opponents. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day.